Welcome to Creative Piecemeal Podcast, a podcast for creatives. I'm your host, Tammy Takeishi. Join me for compelling conversations with artists, actors, authors, musicians, and other creatives about the impact of the creative and fine arts in their lives and our ever-changing world. Thank you for listening. Hello, welcome to another episode of Creative Piecemeal Podcast. Today, I'm joined by a man known as Dr. Yuk, uh, Jim Rosikoff. He is a dermatologist and a musician, and music has been a major part of his life along with his medical career. And he's played guitar from 1961 to 2001 and then switched to the ukulele. But he is a fantastic uke player. He runs Glastonbury Uke Club, and and he's also the owner and operator of the amazing Dr. Uke website where you can find resources and songs. And they've definitely been invaluable to me as a music therapist. I, that's my number one place to go to get, to get charts to use. So I'm really excited to have you on the show to talk about music and creative living. Well, thank you for inviting me and it's good to see you. Thanks. Good to see you too. When did you first become passionate about your field of dermatology and and how did you decide to go on to do music later in life? Actually, uh, did both from the start. My father was a general practitioner, a doctor in uh, upstate New York and in a small town of about 20,000. And he was one of three doctors. And so uh, he was a big role model in my life. And even when I was young, um, 10 years old, 11 years old, I would go on uh, office calls with him. I mean, house calls and uh, and see how he reacted and and how the patients reacted to him. And uh, I I admired him my whole life and used him as a role model. He even I think when I was 12 or 13, he had a blackboard that he brought up to the living room and explained the pulmonary circulation to me. So I think I was destined to be a, uh, a doctor. I think I, I did both at the same time because my mother was a, a, an excellent pianist. And there were five kids in the family. And we all stood around the piano and, and sang songs that she knew. And she knew a lot of songs. And so we knew all the songs from the 1800s, the 1900s, the 20s, um, and loved them. Uh, but I started my singing career. I, I think rather than a musician, I'm a singer, and I happen to play a couple instruments. On my third birthday in 1949, my uncle was staying with us as he attended Buffalo Medical School, and he had, for some reason, a record-making machine. And on my third birthday in 1949, I recorded on one side, Take Me Out to the Ball Game," Aww. and Babyface on the other side, and they were on key. So I've been singing for 73 years at least. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So that's how uh, I've sort of merged the music and the medicine. So I, I think from an early age, I realized I could harmonize. And so I would dole out the parts, the harmony parts to the other kids in the family. And we would sing at least four part harmony um, to all of these songs. So that's that's how it started. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was a good childhood. Do you still own that record today? I do. I do. Um, it was a small, the size of a 45, but it was recorded at 78. So I was able to change that into a CD oh, so, wow. so, and save it. So I do have it. Oh, that's so neat. So it's proof. It's not just uh, apocryphal. You know, it's a real, <laughs> real story. Did did the other members of your family continue to sing and sort of play instruments for fun as well? Well, we all did a little piano, but uh, they did. They did. And later on, when I took up the guitar in the early 60s, we all sang um, songs with the guitar in in, again, harmony. 
And I had individual songs that I would sing with this sister and certain songs that I would sing with this sister and uh, another that I would sing with the other sister. Uh, my brother, he, he just sort of sang along with all of us. But yeah, they, they continued to sing. And even now when we get together, uh, we remember all those songs. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Like it created lots of memories for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and one of my sisters went on to do uh, Sweet Adeline's and Barbershop. And her husband is a, 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 a actually a champion barbershop singer. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Barbershop is just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I've done a lot of barbershop also, singing uh, all different kinds uh, over the years. So I'm quite curious, does this mean you have a really large music collection? Well, when you say music collection, you mean we I do have 400 albums and and several CDs, but that's in the past. I mean, these days I'm just sort of using YouTube to look for songs that I want to arrange, you know, first I transpose it to a, a, a suitable key for men and women and uh, and then arrange it. Um, so I don't have time to listen to those albums, but they certainly were formative uh, for my musical uh, background. If you had to pick like three of your top favorite or even most influential albums that you've had growing up, what what would that be? Well, I don't know about individual albums, but I I, I would say the albums. I have seven albums by my favorite close harmony duo, which were Joe and Eddie. Now, they were a uh, close harmony duo in the early 60s, and they had a short career because one of them was killed after a few years. Um, they, they sang harmony on, uh, well, one sang the melody, and, and Joe Gilbert was just an incredible harmonizer. And I'd say, you know, they did show tunes. They did everything I do now. Uh, so I sort of patterned. Um, and loved all the music they did. They did show tunes and folk music. Their one big crossover hit was There's a Meeting Here Tonight um, from the early 60s. I think people my age uh, would would remember that. And, and uh, you know, Peter, Paul, and Mary. And another one, uh, I loved the folk music back in the 60s, the early 60s, and I, and I have a lot of folk albums. And Ian and Sylvia were a duo uh, a married couple from uh, Canada, and and they did uh, beautiful songs too that I I loved. Nice. I'm gonna have to look up those duos. I'm actually not familiar with them. So. Well, if you look on my site, as you've mentioned, I have categories, and if you look for the category of Ian and Sil- uh, Ian and Sylvia, and then there's a category of Joe and Eddie, I have most of the songs that uh, I grew up with on there because I sing them probably using similar harmonies to those. And, and with, with Joe and Eddie's seven albums, I made up and sang along a third harm, a second harmony, you know, a third part to all their songs. And they sort of honed my harmony skills. And uh, so, yeah, I love them. Wow. That's wonderful. And I saw them in college. Uh, I was able to see them uh, at the end of their career their short career, but I saw them uh, at college and they were, they were outstanding. That's always nice when a group can have such a positive impact in your life and you're able to see them while they're still, you know, in their prime. Earlier, we talked about how you lead the Glastonbury Uke group. Um, what is a funny memory or a favorite story from, from your time with that so far? Nothing too funny with them. You know, I've, I've led them for over 15 years. And, and uh, one of the things we did was uh, did a monthly sing-along for the community, a community-wide sing-along uh, every month for about 15 years, you know, taking a couple months off in the summer. So before the pandemic, we were up to a hundred, our 104th community-wide sing-along. And what that consisted of was about 200 people in the audience 50 ukulele players, and then in the front would be me fronting the group on ukulele and vocals, um, and a saxophonist and a bass player. Oh, wow. So we were able to play anything from my site. And so we did 104 um, sessions 
performances with with that group. But one funny thing that did uh, one of my favorite groups, as you know, is is my with my daughters. I've been performing with my two daughters for 27 years since they were eight and 10 years old. When the older one went over, off to college, the younger one and I continued performing and, and we were at a senior center and then probably a, an assisted living facility. And we did a performance and, and um, everybody loved it. And when they came up to congratulate my daughter, especially um, one man came up and said, uh, you were great. I'm deaf. And it, he followed that with, I'm, you know, I guess he could hear a little bit or he could read lips or something. Mm. But that was that was funny. That's family lore. That's very funny. And you said you still perform with your daughters to this day? Well, when we can get together, you know, they both live in the New York City area. We started out. Yeah, that's that's my favorite group. I have a few ukulele groups, a few music groups. We started out when they were eight and ten years old. Fourth grade they could choose an instrument at school. And so my older daughter at age eight, I guess, uh, chose the alto sax. So I took up the alto sax so I could teach her. And and we had a uh, method of teaching that I called the dusophone uh, from the uh, French for two, you know, because the alto sax, uh, saxophone is French. And so the dusophone, I would blow into the saxophone and she would finger it or she would blow into the saxophone and I would finger it. And that's how she could get a jump start on her learning, you know, rather than fumbling around with trying to do both at once. Yeah, so we're still performing. So the other one at age eight, fourth grade, um, chose the double bass. Oh. Even though she was, what, tiny, you know, <laughs> um, very petite. And so she played. The, and so that's I learned the double bass. So I could help her learn. And then once they got too good for me, then they took private lessons, of course. We were performing by then. And we performed in an amphitheater, an outdoor amphitheater, uh, for over a thousand people, just the three of us, for a two-hour concert. Oh, wow. And we sang three-part harmony to songs from the Mills Brothers and and Peter, Paul, and Mary, and the Beatles, and, and just everything. Um, and they were eight and 10 and they both played alto sax for this concert. And the, the older one played the keyboard and the little one played the bass guitar and the upright bass, the double bass. That's impressive. And we put down a four by eight plywood floor um, and they tap danced while I played uh, shine on your shoes by oh Tony Bennett. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like it would have been so amazing to see. Well, it was amazing. And then we went on to perform at nursing homes and and we've performed. Uh, we have about 25 videos on YouTube of performances in New York, in and around New York City, in clubs and bars. Um, and they still want to get together and and uh, perform with their 76 year old dad. So. Oh. So I'm, I want to get back together and, and try to invade the New York scene again. There you go. There if, you they go. Have, if they have time with their careers. But. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's, we used to be, when they were young, we were called Pride and Joy and Dad. And then when they got too old for that name, uh, we became Dr. Uke and Daughters. So now we're Dr. Uke and Daughters. And when they come home for vacations or, or for holidays, um, I suggest that they choose a song, that they each choose a song, and I'll re arrange it and record it, um, the ukulele part, and then they'll sing it when they're home, and I put it on my site. So in my categories, I also have Dr. Uke's Daughters, and I have the 50 songs that they sing along either in harmony or they do the melodies um, on my site. I've heard some of them. Yeah. Or yeah. even some where they've soloed and they'll sing like some of the more feminine songs. Yeah. Well, that's right. Uh, I, I choose those for them to sing because they're, they're not plausible, uh, coming from me, you know, but also they have their favorites. Uh, uh, and, and Sylvie's voice, she's my older daughter is more of a, a soprano, second soprano. And so she loves the songs by Joni Mitchell. And so if they're 
there are probably, I don't know, 15 songs by Joni Mitchell or more. And Sylvie sings most of those. Sylvie sings probably all of those. She loves Janice Ian. And so she sings those songs too. And my other daughter is more into jazz songs. And so Jane Monheit and Diana Krall and, and, and songs like that. They're a joy and a pride. I bet. I right. bet. I must say, as a consumer of your website, I love having a recording, even if it's just what you might consider a rough recording. It's been so great because I don't always know every song that I might need or know how it goes. And so it's been great. So like playing along with the recordings, getting an idea of what the melody sounds like. It's it's such an invaluable resource. I absolutely love it. Well, that's why I started it, because when I started teaching sixth graders, which I've been teaching for 20 years, and that's another story. I started the uh, website for them, and I, I thought, well, okay, I'll do that, and I'll sing them so they would know how the song goes and how it should sound. So then um, it just sort of caught on, and I enjoyed recording, you know, because I'm a singer. And so I just kept doing it, and without advertising at all, it, it just took off because it, it is sort of unique that you have – each song in two different tunings for ukulele, you know, uh, the standard tuning and the baritone tuning. And you can hear how it goes, as you said, um, how it should sound as you play it. So, and I get emails from all over the world thanking me for that, for exactly that. Very appreciative and, and they're very grateful. I also love that you, you don't just stick with older songs. You've got such a wide variety. You've got Broadway tunes, you've got holiday tunes, you've got songs from other ethnicities and cultures. And, right. you know, you've got a few more modern songs. I, I really love that. You know, it's, it's such a wide variety. I love all that music. So I do have all those categories. I have 150 categories from folk to country to Beatles to Stevie Wonder, Linda Ronstadt, Doris Day songs, you know, hundreds and hundreds of Sinatra songs, Nat King Cole and show tunes and Yiddish songs. And, and, and just look at the categories. Yeah. You'll find, hopefully find something you like, you know, I do it for the, for others to learn. I've always been a, a teacher. I, I taught while I was a doctor as well during my residency and uh, as I was practicing, but I've always approached it as a teacher uh, on the website, you know, what can, help them to learn and and even perform. So I have things for performers. If you've looked at my two-page medley section, a hun- almost 450 songs put together as medleys, you know, at least two songs, some sevens, up to seven songs of uh, different categories, songs that go together by tempo. People appreciate that too. You know, speaking of the uniqueness of singing along with but right now, 3,319 songs of all different kinds and also having performed in nursing homes and assisted living places for, for so many years. My new project is to alert activities directors, especially with having gone through the pandemic and people are still a little skittish about having performers come in. But I'm tr- starting uh, to send to activities directors, how they can use my site to just, you know, pick out the songs they want or the, the favorite songs of the residents and just take the uh, URLs, put them on a Word document, um, and then just play them for the people to sing along with. And then they can go to my lyrics page and all of the songs have just the lyrics printed out for distribution to the audiences. So many people have written in and said that they're using my site to perform at nursing homes and for their pa- their parents with Alzheimer's. And it, it's it's really, um, really gratifying. And, and I, I, I tell people and I feel this way that I feel like I'm still in a healing profession, you know, having retired from medicine and now I'm doing this. Yeah. Definitely. It, it makes such a wonderful impact, probably a lot wider than, than you know. Well, as a music therapist, you know how they receive uh, the songs. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, early on, 
my daughters appreciated that too. When they were eight and 10, as I said, we would go to nursing homes and they would see how people who, who looked like they were, you know, just uh, un, non-responsive, just sitting there, would perk up because they would remember these old songs that we were doing, like Opus One by the Mills Brothers and, and so, their favorite songs. You know, from show tunes, we have a medley that we do, uh, Getting to Know You, followed by Wouldn't It Be Loverly from My Fair Lady. And so the girls saw that they, the people, even with their cl- eyes closed, they would tap their, start tapping their feet or mouthing the words that were still in there somewhere. You know, so, yeah, it, it, it has an impact. You know, I go in and play the ukulele and provide music therapy for my, for my job, you know, in nursing homes and care homes. And the song You Are My Sunshine is one of the most requested by far. You know, as people in nursing homes are going to change from, you know, when their age of awareness was, the music is going to change, you know. Mm-hmm. So now I'm 76, so I, I think most of the people in the nursing homes now, they recognize the Everly Brothers and and the Beatles and Elvis. And so things are changing a little bit. You put so much time and effort and love into the website. How do you decide what songs to do next and what to arrange? And how long does that usually take you? Well, I've got a lot of songs, so it's getting harder and harder to think of new songs. Um, But my wife and I will be exercising and uh, watching a movie, and I'll hear something that I don't think I have yet. And so we'll stop the movie and I'll go right down the title. And so that's how, and and on commercials now, you hear a lot of good songs Mm. that are used in commercials. So I get ideas from that. Um, That's that's a funny story about that too. Um, We'll be watching a movie and I'll say, hey, that would be a great song, you know, to do. And so we'll stop it and I'll write it down. And then afterwards I'll go and I will put down the lyrics you know, this is how I do it. I set down the lyrics and then I'll decide what key do I want to put it in for people. And then I'll write, I'll just type the chords Hear the, I can hear the chords. So I'll type the chords over the lyrics and then I'll go to save it. And it says, do you want to replace the one you already have? Oh no. You know, well, I've got so many songs that I forget that I've done that song years ago. Fortunately, it's in the same key that I would have put it in, you know, so- <laughs> And that takes a lot of time. We have something that's called the Sari rule. My wife's name is Sari. And so the Sari rule is that before I even think of doing a song, I have to look on my site to see if I've done it already. Okay. And, and I'm guilty of uh, violating the Sari rule <laughs> a lot. It can take four to five hours probably. Ooh. You know, you know, and I break it up a little bit. Yeah. It, it takes a, a while, but that's, that's, I mean, I'm retired and that's what I do. And, and I'm down in the basement where my studio is, so-called studio. And I'm there so much that f- at supper time, my wife stomps on the floor above me and I come up for supper. <laughs> but that's, that's how I spend my time doing those songs and arrangements. But also other ideas, many of the songs that are on my site um, are requests from all over the world for many songs I don't even know. So I'll listen to the song on YouTube because I can find anything on YouTube. If I like it, I'll arrange it and record it and put it on my site and send it to the person. If I don't want to use it for my site, I'll just write down the chords for the person and send it to them. But I get a lot of uh, a lot of requests. One of them, you know, in my recent, I have a, a section recent editions songs that I put up every day or every other day. And one of my recent ones was uh, the blues my naughty sweetie gives to me. Okay, I didn't know that at all, but it was a request from someone, and it's by the Jim Queskin Jug Band, which I saw at college at Harvard in Cambridge um, back in the 60s. I saw their band, but I didn't know that song, so I put that one up. And another one that I didn't know came from an 18-year-old in Malaysia who loves the jazz songs from the 50s mm. and wanted Dancing on the Ceiling 
and so I get I get requests, uh, I get ideas for songs uh, from all over. And then I then I do have a list of songs that I want to do myself, and I refer to that uh, from time to time. And they include songs from all genres as well. Excellent. Yeah, I I really appreciate all the hard work you put into it. Like yeah. I said, you're my number one go to site for not only that's actually how I learned to play ukulele is through your website. So. so speaking of playing instruments, you know, obviously you picked up other instruments because of your children, but if you could play any other instrument in the world, what would it be? Well, I, I want to get better on the saxophone. Okay. I mean, if you listen to many of my songs, um, I do play some saxophone solos um, that I can arrange. Most, many of my solos, I whistle, you know, I can whistle all right. And so I can improvise whistling to anything. And I wish I could do that with the saxophone. So I'm always working on scales and and arpeggios on the saxophone so that I can make it one-to-one with my mind. You know, what I want to whistle just come out on the saxophone. So I'm working on it. Nice. Yeah, no, saxophone is difficult. It's fun. I mean, I can do all the scales pretty well and read music all right but but rather than read music i just want to do my own what i what i come up with in my mind for improvising yeah so we're going to switch gears here to a serious question but what is a common stereotype about um being a musician and performer and educator that that you hope to break with your work well I, again i don't consider myself a musician but I certainly feel like I'm an educator. I don't know. With regards to the ukulele, I think that uh, may- maybe if someone doesn't think uh, that they can play an instrument, you know, they're an adult. I think it's the easiest instrument to learn to play as an adult, especially if you're a singer and you want to accompany yourself on an instrument. It's probably too late to learn the uh piano or guitar well enough to accompany yourself. But on the ukulele, you can take off like a rocket ship. In teaching adult ed, two, cor- two eight-week courses a year for, for 20 years, um, I see that. You know, I've taught a lot of people who in their 50s and 60s don't play an instrument, but learn the ukulele and, and now are in my band. So uh, another thing that I come across a lot is people think they cannot sing. Okay. And I don't know, uh, and maybe some can't, but I think a lot of people have been discouraged from singing or dissuaded from singing because when they were young, somebody said, okay, sing this. And it was not in their range. And so they said, oh, you can't sing. And I find that to be true in, in some cases, in many cases. So, uh, I think, I think that, uh, you know, people should, be a little more aware of that. You know, if somebody wants to sing and say, oh, I can't sing, you know, just be patient and be a patient, which is another thing on my website. I have a disclaimer, if you've seen at the top of the songs page, these are for educational or medicinal purposes only. And I think people take it that way. So one final question, and it would be, how would you like to be remembered? Alive. No, no. <laughs> No, no, that's that's like the the joke. No, I think as a uh, a nice person and someone who helped people, you know, because I think that uh, that I've spent my my life as a teacher helping people and and a doctor helping people. So just that uh, I was helpful. Well, I can definitely attest that you're so kind, and your your website has been immensely helpful. So I think you've definitely. Definitely lived up to that legacy so far. Dr. Yuke, a.k.a. Jim Rosikoff, thank you so much for being on Creative Peace Mill Podcast. Listeners, please check out his website if you're a musician and you're wanting to learn ukulele or expand your ukulele repertoire. It is fantastic. And as always, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Like the show? Have a question? Stop by the Facebook and Instagram pages. Links are in the show notes or search for Creative Piecemeal Podcast on social media and click follow for all the latest.